when you're talking about growing revenue, especially if you're trying to accelerate revenue growth, you have to look at it from a system standpoint. It's just like a machine where each cog and wheel has to be aligned because each one is moving the next one forward. And if any cog blows or any part of the system breaks down, the whole system breaks down, not just that one thing. It just throws everything into chaos. And so you have to take a look at the whole machine and say, okay, if the machine is not creating as much output as you want, where diagnose where in the system is it really breaking down and what do we need to fix first? So when we're looking at that, when you're looking at a business development system, what does that look like? Okay. So the system of course is cradle to grave. It is how do people become aware of their problem and that you solve their problem and then extending it all the way through to you got a new customer, right? So awareness of their problem. This is pre-awareness of you and your brand and your solution. So awareness of the problem all the way through to them becoming a customer. Technically, you can extend that into deepening that relationship and referrals and client delight, but we're going to just start. We're going to end at the invoice for simplicity's sake today. So if you're looking at that, where are the points of impact for that marketing and or sales, but your business development efforts need to Hit. And this is about balancing getting results now, as well as planting seeds for getting results later. As I mentioned, you know, that book took me four years in, or I mean, four years, by the time it comes out, it will have taken me four years and it will be the right work and it should create exponential value for the world and for our business. And it was the right thing, but I had to decide and I can't wait for four years for that to come alive just because it's part of our marketing plan, right? We need results. We need to stay alive right now. So what does that look like? Okay. So if we work backwards to forwards, making improvements and optimizations at, as close to the point of sale as possible is where you get the biggest impact. I have too, too, too many companies come to me and say, we just need lead generation, lead generation, lead gen, lead gen, lead gen, lead gen, lead gen, lead gen. And most people don't really understand what that means because lead gen is not a magic wand. You are not, you're not saying they're qualified. You're not saying when they can buy, how much they can buy. I mean, nothing like they're, it's just this random catch all for what every business owner wants out of their marketing is lead gen. But so many problems happen if that is not put into proper context. So if you need short term and you want short term significant impact, you must focus on late stage sales development. And so that means messaging and choreographing your customer experience so that it is easy to say yes. It is easy to tell the truth. It is easy for your prospect to get educated and they have absolute clarity and confidence in you and they are avoiding buyer's remorse, or if they have potential buyer's remorse, they're being honest with you about it so that you can guide them through. So you've got to look at how can we get more wins? How can we improve our win-loss ratio? We've also got to look at, can we accelerate our sales cycles? The answer is yes. I very, very rarely see a truly time optimized sales cycle. And guess what? You can have impact on how quickly buyers move things forward. Not every time there are, there are certain bureaucracies, certain consensus building activities that have to happen, maybe certain buying cycles that they are on where they cannot give you a yes before a specific amount of time. However, in general, you can make sales pipelines much more efficient because too often people park um, in the messaging portion of building trust and the client doesn't really want to stay there. They want to know that you can do the job and they want to move forward in their decision-making process. They don't really want to talk to you about you <laughs> for as long as oftentimes we give that information. So making sure that we've got an efficient pipeline. We also want to look at the quality. So, um, 
unqualified or low quality leads, you know, humans that this is not the perfect fit for them or for your company, that is a massive, massive time suck of your sales team's time. It is distracting because it can accidentally lure you to change your offering or to constantly try to be tweaking your message for somebody that's not really a right fit. So they are definitely potential landmines um, in regards to your focus and your discipline and just sucking out all of the opportunities for how do we really create um, increased revenue and increased value for our customers. So you've got to be ruthless with qualifying better and qualifying early. And then on top of that, then you take those qualification criteria and that that process for making sure that uh, you know, prospect is being guided well all the way through, then you apply it to your marketing. So we say, okay, if poor quality leads are coming in, what can we do to change that? There's got to be high accountability and high clarity in regards to that transition and what's happening when something comes from marketing and is, and is given to sales. We see a massive gap consistently, you guys, consistently across industries and markets. And that is a major, major waste of money, major waste of opportunity, major slowdown in revenue, um, revenue growth. So huge, huge problem. Now, once we get back further outside, now marketing can impact all of this, right? So it is sales enablement, if you want to call it this, but marketing can and should have an impact on this. And you need, if you, if everyone is aligned around revenue growth, we need to be thinking about the total potential points of impact, not just the marketing points of impact, right? Okay. So then when you pull it back, now we have loads of them as long as we're asking the right questions. Targeting, going deeper and wider with existing clients, optimizing your list, building a larger list, building an audience space. But the further away from the point of sale that you are, the longer the runway is before you see results. Sounds really obvious, but we don't think like that. We don't always think logically when we are hungry or when we are frustrated or when we are disappointed or when we wished we had seen results yesterday. So you've got to be really practical about the fact that you are planting different types of seeds. Some seeds will bloom and harvest in three months and some seeds will bloom and harvest in three years or 10 years. But you really have to be planting, um, you know, a well-balanced um, garden of different tactics that are going to nurture and produce different types of results at different points in your business timeline.